Hello, I'm Frost. It's mid-October 2020 and welcome to all that's going on in the world of sci-fi gaming. Welcome back and I have lots to cover. Before we get underway, uh, let me just say very quickly, don't forget to like, subscribe, uh, hit the bell icon, all those kind of good things if you're enjoying this video as it really, really does help the channel. Right, so let's get straight into it. Uh, first up, we've got Aquinox uh, from Deep Descent. Uh, this is actually coming out today, the day that this video is being published, 16th of October 2020. Uh, and it's by a, uh, I believe, Serbian development company called Arrow, and it's being published by THQ Nordic. And it is a, an underwater submarine, well, it would be underwater for submarines, but you know what I mean, a submarine um, for a shooter. And uh, if you're kind of a little bit burnt out on Star Wars Squadrons, then this is a, just a natural follow-on to that. Uh, it is set in the 27th century, and uh, in the 22nd century some bad stuff happened, and essentially the planets become inhabitable, and so therefore everyone has gone under the oceans, and everyone now fights for resources using submarines. Now, this game actually has a lot of history. Uh, it was originally released, or the, the series kind of started, back, all the way back in 1996, when it was called Archimedean Dynasty. Uh, there then were a couple more releases, I think in 2001, 2003. And then in 2015, a Kickstarter was started uh, to try and bring Aquinox back. Uh, it was originally planned to be released in 2017. Obviously, it's a little bit late, but it's here now. So, um, yeah, if you fancy um, flying around in some ships and not do it in space, but underwater for a change, then Aquinox is going to be the game for you. Uh, another game that's uh, released uh, just literally in the last couple of days. Uh, I have mentioned it in a previous um, update that I did, and that's Space Crew uh, by Curve Digital. This is a really, really small uh, British studio uh, that did a game called Bomber Crew that went down very well. So Space Crew is kind of like a roguelike look to it. Uh, it is a real-time strategy game uh, where you are the, the captain of the spaceship and you've had to fight off the alien invaders and you have to manage your crew, you have to hire your crew, you have to manage your ship, modify your ship, get upgrades, all that kind of good stuff. So um, from what I understand, it can be a bit of a grind in the game, but you know, it's a small studio, it's not that expensive, and if you fancy something a little bit tongue in cheek as well, then uh, I think Space Crew is definitely worth a look. All right, then uh, I am gonna mention it again. I mentioned it in my previous update, Watch Dogs Legion. So that's coming out on the 29th of October. Uh, it is still sci-fi, it is set in a near future dystopian London and being a Londoner I'm just all over this game, I'm really really looking forward to it. So it is an RPG, uh, the thing that's very different about Watch Dogs Legion is that you can play any of the NPC characters. The idea is, is you have to build up a militia to fight the corporates and um, all of the various NPCs have different abilities. So the reason why I'm mentioning it is not only because it's being released, uh, we've actually had since then some more news. And that is that on the 3rd of December, so we released on 29th of October, but on the 3rd of December, uh, we're getting multiplayer. Uh, so that means we'll have a uh, different uh, kinds of co-op. So I think there's a free roam version, a tactical ops version, uh, which will be two to four players. And then there's going to be a, a spider bot arena. So you'll be able to take your spider bots and fight PvP with up to eight players in these arenas. Uh, then on top of that, we've also found out that we're going to get some additional free content sometime in around early 2021. We haven't got a specific date yet. And in that, we're going to get some uh, new characters with some new abilities, some new missions and that kind of stuff. Then they have also announced the season pass um, and the first of the DLCs that they're going to be bringing out called the Bloodline. So the Bloodline DLC is going to bring in some hero characters. Um, there's going to be specifically Aiden and Wrench, which are from previous versions of Watch Dogs, previous releases of Watch Dogs. And also I think they even bring in an Assassin's Creed character as well, and obviously throwing in some new missions as well. So yeah, so they're kind of mixing it up a little bit. We've got some free content and then we've also got some, some paid DLCs uh, coming in early next year with the multiplayer coming at the end of this year. So yeah, it looks like they're really, really throwing a lot of resources behind uh, Watch Dogs Legion. Okay, now we're gonna come along to a new availability. So The Outer Worlds. The Outer Worlds is just an amazing action RPG game and it came out this time last year. 
but it was only available on the Epic Games Store and on Xbox, uh, the Xbox Store through the Game Pass. And um, now it is available on Steam as of the 23rd of October. So the year long kind of exclusivity contract has now ended. And so you will now be able to get Outer Worlds on Steam if that's your preferred purchasing platform. And if you haven't played Outer Worlds and you like your sci-fi, I can highly recommend it. It's made by Obsidian, so it's a great game, really good storylines. Uh, they've also had the DLC come out just a, a month ago, I think, yeah, Peril on Gorgon. So you've got that available as well. Then moving on, um, the, the game that never dies, this game just keeps on going and going, and that is XCOM 2. The turn-based strategy game, sci-fi strategy game, uh, that had built up a real, uh, quite the reputation for uh, for the uh, the, the ability to miss with the shotgun at point blank range. But you know what? <laughs> uh, it, it's like this game has legs, and uh, the reason why I'm bringing it up again is because it's now being ported to uh, iOS, and so as of the 5th of November, uh, you will be able to get it on your Apple iPhones and on your iPads. And uh, you're going to get uh, the War of the Chosen expansion plus four other DLCs as well. It's all part of the pack. Uh, just be aware though that uh, do check with the site um, um, before you get it because it is kind of limited to certain phones and certain iPads. I think it's like the, the iPad Pros from 2017 and iPads from 2019 only support the game. And uh, iPhones Pro is the iPhone X there's only certain types that actually support it. So please be aware of that and please do check. So that wraps it up for new availability. And now we come on to announcements. And for me, this is a big one. Uh, obviously I've covered this, uh, Planetfall a lot on my channel. And we now have all details on the third DLC of the three DLCs that were announced at the time of game launch that were gonna be coming. And it is called Star Kings and it is coming to us on the 10th of November. Now, I will make a video specifically about this, uh, as uh, there's quite a lot to cover, but for now, I can just tell you uh, there's a new faction uh, called the Oathbound, and the Oathbound are paladins that uh, can call upon battle mechs, uh, these huge battle mechs to bring into battle. Uh, they'll use arc damage uh, mixed up with entropy, which makes them potentially very good to mix with Heritor Secret Tech. Uh, we're going to get some new missions, uh, some new campaign missions uh, with the Paladins, and we're getting some new animals as well, uh, including um, sentient cyborg mushrooms, right? Now, I'm a big fan of my penguins, uh, but yeah, sentient cyborg mushrooms, only planet fall, right? <laughs> so yeah, 10th of November, that's coming our way, and keep an eye out for one of my videos all about that. Then uh, we're going to go on to some British sci-fi. Uh, Doctor Who. Uh, Doctor Who has had announcements for two new releases that are going to come spring 2021, next year, early next year. Uh, the first game is by Maze Ther Theory. It's called The Edge of Reality and it's going to be for PCs and consoles. And it will be an adventure game uh, with puzzles and challenges. And apparently uh, the actors, uh, both David Tennant and Jodie Whittaker, uh, are, have played a role in the development of this game. So I think they've done the voiceovers and stuff like that. So something to look out for. Unfortunately, the trailer is just purely cinematic. So we don't have much about it. And that's what you're watching at the moment. But hopefully uh, we'll find out more as time goes on. Then the other Doctor Who release, which is also coming in spring 2021, and uh, is by Kagan Games. This one is a mobile and Switch game called The Lonely Assassins, and uh, it is an adventure game, uh, but it's actually very intriguing because it's based around uh, the Blink episode, which had the Weeping Angels, and you find a phone, and that's the premise of the story. So you find a phone, so your phone becomes the phone that you found, and then you're interacting with your phone as if it's a phone. So you're playing a game where your phone is a phone, if that makes sense. So it's, yeah, it's like kind of really interesting take on this and um, I'm really hoping they've done a good job of this because this is a really really clever way of um, creating a, a mobile game so there you go so Lonely Assassins that's coming early next year as well and then uh, another game that I have mentioned in the past uh, Outriders uh, we now have a release date for Outriders Outriders is going to be coming on the 2nd of February 2021 so that's, this is all good news with stuff coming sort of early 2021 because normally that's kind of a dry period but it looks like, you know, obviously, with all the things that have happened this year, some stuff's been delayed and it's coming now early next year. 
And so that means we don't have that kind of big void in, in the game releases. So very quickly, Outriders is a third person shooter, stroke, action uh, based RPG. Uh, you have four different classes. Uh, you are on an alien planet called Enoch. On this planet, there is a storm called the Anomaly, which gives powers powers to, uh, which I'm never a fan of because it kind of puts it into the fantasy world, but there you go, got powers uh, that affect the aliens uh, and some of your people, hence how you've got these classes with these abilities. And it's a sort of a semi-open world game where you have to run around and uh, deal with everything and all the stuff that's happening and you have sort of main quests, side quests, all the kind of stuff you'd expect from an RPG. Looks beautiful, some of the terrain and everything looks quite amazing, some of the stories look quite in depth as well. So uh, yeah, this looks like a big release and uh, as I said, it's coming on the 2nd of February 2020. Right, other news. Uh, EVE Online news, because there's always EVE Online news, right? Okay, this time I've got quite a lot to cover, but I'll be trying to be as quick as possible about this. So, first up, keep star fights. Okay, the war is going on and it's really, really building up to a head now. Uh, if you're not aware, then uh, essentially there's two sides. Uh, there is the Imperium, which is made primarily of Goon Swarm Federation and a few other alliances like Initiative and French Connection, for example, versus basically the rest of EVE, the rest of Nullsec EVE. So you have Legacy, which is uh, Tappy to uh, Test Alliance, please ignore, uh, who are also uh, have Brave and uh, Warped Detentions, I believe, are in their, their uh, um, coalition as well. You then then allied with uh, Russians, a primarily Russian uh, coalition called Fire, uh, which includes my old alliance called Razor. Uh, then Panfam are also involved, so that's Northern Coalition, uh, and Pandemic Legion, and then they also had Fraternity come into the, the fold, so that kind of became Panda Fam, and so they're all now known as Pappy. So Pappy are trying to invade Delve, which is the uh, the Bastion, the, the or Bastion, there you go, there's another alliance that's in the Imperium, uh, is kind of the, the centre uh, piece of, uh, of the Empire, or Imperium, and uh, they're trying to invade, and it is a very well defended area, but it has an NPC, uh, some NPC systems called the Blood Raider systems. And uh, Pappy are trying to drop keep stars and uh, to, to be able to get a beachhead into Delve. And so far, two keep stars have been dropped. Neither of them have been managed to be anchored. But as a consequence of this, uh, there has been a number of fights. One of them uh, has beaten the EVE Online, previous EVE Online record of the most players involved in a video game fight. And one of these fights actually got over 6,400 players, which is just intense. And the game, the, the battle went on for about 10, 11, potentially 12 hours uh, due to tie-dye, because the game slows down uh, in order to be able to process all of the stuff that's going on in the battle. So far, trillions of ISK have been lost. Uh, in these battles, uh, most of this, most of the, the, the ISK loss has been on uh, the M Imperium side, but they have managed to stop these keep stars from anchoring. So, depending on how you look at the spin, uh, you know both sides are, are, are happy with the outcome so far. Uh, also, there's been over 10,000 ships lost, which gives you an idea of the scale of battles. And as you're watching this video right now, or the time this is released, I will be in that fight. Uh, we've uh, there's another keep star that's been anchored. Uh, oh, it's trying to be anchored, it's been dropped, but it's trying to be anchored today and uh, we can expect another 10-11 hour fight and uh, I will be in that. So uh, if you see me, give me a wave, okay? Uh, then uh, other bit of uh, EVE Online news, uh, we've got new systems. This is something, a big deal. We've got some Triglavian uh, systems called Pochven. It's 27 systems uh, made up of three constellations with nine systems in because the uh, with nine systems because the triglavians like the number three so you've got three squared which is your three uh, your your nine systems in a constellation and then you've got three constellations so three cubes 27 systems there you go uh, and uh, you need filaments to be able to access these new this new region and to be able to dock at the stations uh, you will need uh, to have tri standings with the triglavians and uh, it's got its own graphics own look and feel uh, very atmospheric and uh, yeah, looks absolutely amazing. And if you've got time, then swing by and then take a look. And uh, I would like to say thank you as well to Scorpion uh, Median, uh, who's a player who actually gave me a little bit more information about this because I just not had time to look at it at all. Uh, then the other thing that's happened as well is the, the ore changes. So they've changed all the way, uh, all the mix up of the ores in EVE Online. Uh, this is worth mentioning because it changes uh, 
things drastically. Veldspar, which is primarily used to build Tech 1 ships and makes Tritanium, uh, is now only available in high sec, and this changes the, the meta of the game substantially. As before, alliances were able to stay in their own Nalsec system and have all the resources they needed at their disposal. This is now no longer the case, and uh, it will be shaking up the game, and uh, I'll be interested to see where that leads. And then finally, we're now into Quadrant 4. So uh, a CCP Games, with the developers of EVE Online, release uh, in quadrants, so in quarters. And in Quadrant 4, uh, we've got some more stuff coming. One of the things they have mentioned is they're going to make more changes to the supercarriers. Uh, so that's going to be interesting to see where that leads, because they've really made some changes this year. Uh, but they're actually going to bring in something called a Tactical Clone Bay. Uh, which is really interesting. So the idea is, is that if you get podded in a battle, you'll be able to reawaken your clone in a supercarrier and be in a ship and be able to undock and fight immediately. So yeah, that's going to be interesting and uh, gives another role to the supercarriers. So there you go. So that's EVE Online. There's quite a lot to cover, uh, but uh, hopefully I try to keep it as brief as possible. And then we come on to the final thing, which is the big news that everyone is talking about right now, and that is Cyberpunk 2077. It's now just over a month away, uh, 19th of November, and uh, last night, that's on the 15th of October, we had uh, Night City Wire episode 4. So we got some more um, goodies, uh, more stuff to look at and see about it, uh, about the game. I will cover very briefly what's in it, but I recommend you watch it. Uh, they mainly covered vehicles, so they showed all the different types of vehicles from economy, executive, heavy duty, sport, hypercars, and even Johnny Silverhand's a car, which is a unique car. It's based on a real car. I'm not going to tell you any more than that, uh, but it's a classic, and uh, you will see the amount of effort they've put into that. Oh, of course, we've got bikes as well. And talking of bikes, uh, one of the bikes in the game is actually based around Keanu Reeves' uh, bike company. Uh, I think it's called Arch. Yeah, Arch. And, uh, and then they also talk about the sounds, and the, all the effort they put into the sound of the engines and stuff to make it as realistic as possible, to make the cars feel very unique. All the interiors of the cars are very unique as well. And then we went on to fashion, and they covered the four different styles of fashion, and we got some, a good glimpse as to what those fashions look like. Uh, we then got more information about the cosplay uh, competition that happened. Now, that is a full video in itself as well. I'll link that in the description. Uh, but we got to see who the finalists were and we got to see uh, who the winner was. And the costumes are just incredible. The, the amount of work that's gone into these cosplay outfits is just incredible. And then finally, we found out that uh, Stadia will be supported and uh, from the date of launch, which is the 19th of November. Right, that's it. Whew. Lots to cover on this one, like I said. Uh, if you made it to the end, thank you very much. I uh, hope you found that useful. Like I said at the beginning, please give me a like. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. I do release content based around sci-fi gaming on a regular basis. And uh, hit the bell icon to uh, receive notifications of new releases. And finally, I'm also on Twitch. Uh, currently just Wednesdays at the moment. I'm mostly doing Planetfall on Wednesday nights. I will get back to Saturdays at some point. Maybe some move online. Who knows? We'll see. Okay, thank you for watching. Until the next one. Bye.